Good morning. Today's a good day. And it's not just a mantra <laughs> this morning. <laughs> Yesterday, well, I woke up this morning different than yesterday. I think yesterday was like uh, one of those days that you get to like complete misery, where you get to like this point of like, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Like when you're going on a rant in yourself, like a self, like in your brain, you're going on your own rant of misery. Like when you're being a complete, uh, what's the word when you're being like, you know, weak and not taking responsibility and being, oh, the victim. Yesterday I was in total victim mode. And this morning I woke up, I already did my meditation. It took me over an hour to get out of bed, but easily, like, you know, up until a couple months ago, I wake up in the morning, I jump out of bed. But I got out of bed. I could just feel that today's a good day. I had this thought that... If I want an extraordinary life, then I need to make my life extraordinary, not sit around and wait for somebody else to come in so that my life will be extraordinary. And besides, if somebody else is extraordinary and I'm just sitting around waiting for them to come make my life extraordinary, what, what, like, what am I, dead weight? Yeah, I have all sorts of interests and all sorts of things I can do and all sorts of things I know how to do. And... Giving up my vices. And there's a lot more to me. There's a lot of things. If I want an extraordinary life, I need to be the one responsible for going out and making my life extraordinary. Nobody else has that as a burden on them. Because for, some, for somebody to come in and make my life extraordinary and take responsibility for me, that's a burden. It's like dragging somebody else along in your life. So there are all sorts of things I still want to do. I still want to go to Egypt and see the pyramids. And I still want to go to India. And I want to go to Petra. And I have all these art projects that I'm always talking about that I still want to do. There's quite a few of them that I want to do. I want to do, I've, for years I've imagined this one that is kind of like, um, <clears throat> it's for the wall, but it's also, it's uh, sculpted. Anyway, I'm not going to get into it, but I have my junk art that I want to do, and I have my the art that I want to do that glows in, glows in the dark under black light. So there's these paints, like these neon paints you can do, uh, and I think that would be perfect for my art. You could do paintings with neon paints, and then under a black light, they uh, shine up. And there's all sorts of things that I want to do and be, and I, and most of all, I want to be happy and excited and in love with my life. I am in love with my life, even on this uh, twin flame, twin flame thingy, majig. And so yesterday I, I, I uh, woke up and I went to, I went for a hike and that's where I recorded those crying videos. And then I went my sister-in-law is visiting with my parents for the holiday. So, well, she's visiting us for the holiday. So I went and sat with her and I asked her to cut my hair and she did. All I wanted was like the scraggles off the bottom because uh, there's like a few inches on the bottom are just scraggly. And she said, are you sure you want me to do it? And I said, yeah, what is it? It's just cutting a straight line. What's the... And so she started cutting, and she says, no, it's lopsided. So she starts cutting, and no, no, it's lopsided. And finally, I just told her, just leave it. Just leave it. She got it pretty straight. I'll show you. It's quite a bit. It's quite a bit shorter. But it's, you know, also symbolic. So, well, it's still long, but I can feel the difference. It goes through really, really, the brush goes through really easy. So it's quite a bit shorter. But I'll let it do what it wants to do. But it's kind of just chopped, <laughs> just chopped off the edge. But I know my hair. Within a few days, it's going to get back to where it was. 
and um, there were all sorts of things that I wanted to talk about on this video while I was making my coffee this morning. I was thinking, oh, I have so much to say on the twin flame journey also. I feel like I feel like it's hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold. And I'm starting to feel like there's a pattern there. Like there's a pattern of separation, doing the work, 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 overcoming something. And then there's like a short honeymoon, kind of. And then there's separation and doing the work and the pain, the doing the work and the pain. But, you know, kind of, that's, uh, that's what I feel. I still haven't, I still haven't worked out a complete pattern on that because I think that it's evolving and it's changing because even like the, the separations seem to be, I don't know. I don't want to talk about that. I don't want to even focus on all the things that like, I was in my mind yesterday and all the, uh, you know, focusing on whatever. But I want an extraordinary life. And if I want an extraordinary life, I'm the only one that's going to give it to me. And I've decided that what will be will be on this twin flame journey. You know, I can't make anything happen. So what will be will be. Whatever happens, happens. I need to just kind of loosen up in that place and just kind of let it be a side note in my life and try to take the, you know, my own life, uh, you know, take the bull by the horns. Tossing this, the kids are so cute. Um, you know, take the bull by the horns in my own life and decide, you know, start doing things for myself that are not dependent on anybody else. Yeah, you know, if somebody else comes in and they can be added on to my life, then okay, good. But I'm not waiting for anybody. I'm not waiting for anything. I need, I am just going forward with my own life, with creating what I want to create. And the first thing that I really need to put focus on is making money. I need to just simply make money. Not, uh, oh, divine money, uh, energy, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it's an energy, but just start moving money and figuring out the energy as I go. Figuring out, see, I'm, I'm hiking down these stones down there to the bottom. You know, figure out, this is my first cup of coffee this morning. The dogs are happy to be out. They were locked in too long yesterday. I need to remember, because I went out last night. I went over to my parents to get... Oh, I need to, to update about my story from yesterday with forgetting my purse and no gas and being stuck about an hour and a half away from the house with no gas. See, those are the things that happen when, you, when, you're, when, you, when your brain is like all fogged up from... Whatever. I think that, you know, a lot of uh, people that I've met on this twin flame journey, they kind of have obsessive, <laughs> obsessive personalities a little bit. And I would like to hear from anybody if that's watching this, this is, that is on the twin flame journey, if they find that to be true. So I, I kind of find it as kind of like something that keeps on coming back to me. Also with my friend. And we've talked about it, so I'm not, I'm not like discovering America or anything. But I, I, I have an idea by the groups that I get in and stuff, the groups that I talk with and stuff, that this is something that is pretty much universal with the Twin Flames, this uh, obsession. And I also want to hear from Divine Masculine. You know, if there's any Divine Masculines, <laughs> that really is like... Curi I'm really curious to hear what's happening on the opposite side of this uh, of this journey because this is the, the on this side it's like I don't know what the hell. <laughs> and you know the truth is is that you know you chase you chase you chase I don't even like that it's it's almost like it's it's almost like something that you can't overcome with your mind it's uh, something that you that you just go with your feelings and 
and so I don't like the chase chase. It makes you sound like super desperate, which it also probably looks like. <laughs> I'm laughing because it's so far away from who I've ever been. It's so far away from who I am and who I've been and like, I am discovering new sides of me all the time. All the time. But there's so many things that I want to do. There's so many things that I want to do and be and, and go to and experience. And, and if it's all, if I, if I, I, you know, okay, so the twin flame journey, it's not always in my control. You know, it's not something that. It, you know, it's a paradox of sorts. It is, but it isn't really because you know, it's, it's a shifting. It's a process. It's the process of overcoming yourself and your own weaknesses and that, you know, and ways that you've thought your whole life. And that is something that happens gradually. I mean, you can't jump from here to there without going through the process and doing the work. You just can't. You know, one thing leads to another. So a lot of times you can only see the step that is right in front of you. You can't see the step that, you know, the, the step that will bring you to unity or whatever you want to call it. I don't, I don't even want to, I don't even want to, I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. I freaking cry in all my videos. Even this video, like... <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. This thing is so like out of this world. It's out of this world. If you've ever wondered about real magic or about uh, mystical realms or worlds that are all around us that, you know, like uh, spiritual worlds or the spirit world or the godly world or the all or the it. Uh, that token wrote a book about the it. Uh, everything is a part of it. We are a part of it. And when you get on this twin flame journey, all of a sudden you realize it. Now, I've seen also that you can get stuck in parts. You can get stuck. You can get stuck in loops because you start seeing signs everywhere and then it becomes about the signs. And when it becomes only about the signs, then then it's not what the signs are showing you. The, shi the signs are there to show you, to lead you, to, to show you, okay, you're in, you know, it'll give you a sign and then you get curious about this thing and this thing has messages for you. You know, you see a sign and it tells you you're on the right path or you're in the right place or, you know, but the, when you can get obsessed about the signs because the signs are like magical. It's like, whoa, there's signs everywhere. And then you start seeing signs everywhere and they're everywhere. They're everywhere. So. I'm just saying, don't get lost in the signs. Signs start showing up, you know, well, signs have always been there. Once you start seeing the signs, you realize that they were always there. You just weren't in tune with them. Once you get in tune with the signs, it's fun to see signs because they're everywhere. And they, they have a lot of meaning. And they, like, lead you. And so then it can be, like, you can get obsessed and stuck in just seeing signs. And then the universe knows what you're, <laughs> you know, whatever you're looking for, the universe shows you. So I would say if you're in this stage of seeing lots and lots and lots of signs, try to see what the signs are telling you. And then reach out towards what the meaning of the signs are and not the sign itself. Because you can get stuck in the, the loop of signs forever. So yesterday, <laughs> I went I went hiking with the dogs in the morning for like a couple of hours and did those miserable videos. And then I went to I went and got my hair cut and I sat until like a little bit until the afternoon. 
with my parents and my sister-in-law. My sister-in-law, she was married to my brother. They divorced about five years ago, but she's still part of the family. So she still comes and stays for the weekends and and does holidays with us. And uh, we talk on the phone, we're good friends. I used to say that my brother married her for me. <laughs> But she fit right into the family like, a, you know, just like a pea in the pod. And uh, it, it, she is family. So I went and got my hair cut and I did all, I did, you know, like, uh, I did my eyebrows and I did all my, you know, touch-ups like that. I'm not going to go into detail. But I, I did like, uh, like, you know take care of myself a little bit, which I haven't been doing. I've kind of been letting myself kind of lack. But yesterday was holiday. I kind of let myself off the hook. And then I didn't feel like being there anymore. And my sister-in-law said some interesting things to me. She said uh, that I've changed, that I used to be full of life and like full of life light and go get them and out there and doing things and alive and that. And that in this past year, I kind of feel like an empty shell of what I used to be. Which I could see what she's saying. I can see it. But I know that on the inside, I'm an empty shell of what I used to be because I used to, I, I, I've become more aware. I'm on this spiritual rising and I am, I, I, I am in, an, in a place where I'm far more like, if I'm more emotional, I'm jumping back and forth. My emotions are going back and forth. I I know that. That I, I it seems to the people around me, my parents have also told me and my kids and people that know me uh, close have told me that I'm, uh, that I need to get a hold of myself and that I'm me bulbelet. Me bulbelet is like I'm lost kind of. But I am lost, but I'm lost to be found. I'm losing myself to find my real true self. I know this. I can feel it inside. I feel like I'm, I'm much, even though on the outside, I'm crying all the time. And, and, and uh, I think my brother, I don't remember who, somebody told me that I'm, I'm going through depression. I went through depression. I know what depression feels like. So this does have symptoms of depression. It does, but there's light at the end of this. I see the light. Like I can see that I'm on a journey. I can see that I am on a uh, path. You know, I can see that I'm, that this is a process and that this is part of the process is overcoming this weakness. So it's not just depression for depression. Like I went through this major depression. I should do some videos about things that I've gone through, like my depression and my alcoholism and my overweight and my post-trauma. And uh, there's so many different things that I can go, go uh, and do individual videos on that pinpoint and highlight these certain aspects because I have a lot of insight and a lot to say about them and a lot of knowledge. And I think that it could help a lot of people that are going through those things. And I do believe that when I put out these videos, that they find the people that need to find them and that the people that need to find them, find them. You know, it's kind of like a duality. Once you put yourself and you put, put whatever it is that you're putting out into the universe, the right people find it that need it. And the people that don't need it won't even look at it. It just won't speak to them. So it's just how the universe works. It works natural like that. So the other day I was sitting here and I wanted to just hike down to that, down there. So I may do some hiking. I really want to get some work done. So, so anyway, yesterday, so then I did that and then I just wouldn't, I wanted to go home because we were, oh, and she was having, my sister-in-law was telling me that, and she was talking because it, for some, like, I think that a lot of people around me kind of blame my other, I don't even know what to call him. I don't want to call him a twin. 
the other person in my life that has the, like uh, the, this uh, that I'm affected that I I allow myself to be affected by. Okay, it's like cheesy my words. <laughs> Uh, that I allow myself to be affected by. That's a good one. So I want to get like, I want to get gung ho about my life. I want to get excited about my life. I want to get up in the morning. So this morning when I got up, I woke up and it started going like into that mode. I said, no, I have things that I can do on, when was it? When was it? On Wednesday after work, I went and I picked up some, some, um, I went and picked up some print that I had ordered to send off to Amazon of a product that has been out of stock for like a month and that I just didn't, I ordered it like two weeks ago and I just never went and picked it up because I've been so overwhelmed with everything. I was like so overwhelmed with what? You're walking around on the mountain? Like, okay, so go be miserable doing your work. You, you don't have to be out on the mountain doing your work. Are you like being miserable? You can be miserable while you do your work if you want to be miserable. Or you can just decide not to be miserable. Hey, there's a thought. There's a thought. And you can decide to be, uh, to be, to, to, you know, you know, when I was, went through that, that major, major depression, at the end, I had a, a, a really good friend that I that I was with all the time and I was actually probably pulling his energy away from him because I really used him I'm I'm going to say it like that <clears throat> for strength because and not even strength maybe even companionship because I couldn't pull strength from anybody in that depression was when I realized that I am alone nobody can come in and and fix me for me you know there's nobody that can come in because even my father you know I went you know my father had always been before that a, a real source of strength for me you know if I'm feeling down I go to my father he gives me some good words and some advice and I'm right back on the path and it's something that I realized in that deep depression is that I couldn't pull strength from him in any way, anything, he didn't have anything for me. He was the, the, the strongest, the one that sat there with me and was able to even, you know, uh, be with me. My, my mother, you know, she couldn't even be with me in it because it was so, um, you know, you can only go to the depths that you have gone in yourself and and be there with somebody and hold their hand as they go through something um, when you've been there and the darkness that I was in it I think that it it uh, instigated in her instigated it's not the right word but like ignited in her all of her worst fears that she couldn't deal with so she had a difficult time being there for me uh, my father was kind of there for me, but I already, during, during that depression, I could see that he was losing faith. Like, he didn't know what to do. He was like, and that was shocking for me because he had always been like my anchor or my pillar of strength. And all of a sudden, he's not even strong enough really to, to give me any kind of comfort. And I realized that nobody outside of me you know, that I am alone. Even if I'm with people and people care about me, I'm still alone. And I'm glad that I'm remembering this now because it's connecting to the what this video is all about, which is coming into my own power and making my own life what I want it to be. You know, I have all sorts of interests. Why am I all of my interests and all the things that I love doing? What on earth is that? You. It looks like, yeah, I'll just show you what it is. Okay, Grody. Okay, so that kind of <laughs> took me off. I still have coffee. See, life is good. 
hike around the side of the mountain with my first cup of coffee for the morning. I mean, life is good. Life is good. That I'm at a, a place of awareness that I can even allow myself to do this. You know? Everything comes, you know, everything comes at, it's not, it's not even a price really, right? So if I'm choosing to do this, then I'm choosing not to do other things, right? So everything is a give and take. So if you decide to do this, then obviously you can't be at home doing dishes, right? So, so it's like if you, you have to be able to give to get. That's a, you know, that also goes with money. You know, money is an energy. If you want to receive money, you have to have that energy open on both ends. You can't just be like, you know, let's say if it's a bottle and everything goes into it and you have a little bottle because you have a little bit of money, so you want to hold on tight to the money and you don't let anything come out the bottom, then you stop the flow of energy of it. You know, you have to be able to, you have to give to get. And I remember that from when I had the moving company that the bigger we got and the more money that came into the bank account, the higher the costs were. You know, the more money went out of the bank account. It's like equal. It's like even. It's like this, you create a flow and part of the flow, you create a flow. That's just simply as simple as it is. You can create a little pool, like with a little bit of savings or whatever, but the main, the main thing with money is creating a flow. You know, where, where it, co it comes in and goes out, comes in and goes out. And you kind of live in that flow. You know, as it goes out, that's your life. You know, your life spent. It's just like your time. As you spend your time, your time is spent. As you spend your money, your money is spent. And it also creates whatever you are creating. So I want to go to India. I really want to go to India. And there's other places that I also want to go, but I really want to go to India and I want to go to Peru. Like those are two places really, 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 and to the pyramids and to Petra. But pyramids and Petra are close by here. So I see them as like, oh look, no, you're not gonna be able, are you gonna be able to see it? I'm gonna turn around just in case. There's a whole slew of rock rabbits running across over there. Okay, well they quit. When they don't move, you can't really see them because they're the same color as the rocks. They're like camouflage. How cool is that? I say it's pretty cool. So, so then I, uh, yesterday, right? So she, so she was telling me that this relationship is toxic. That, in other words, right? But she was saying that, and, and also saying things about him. Um, I think that my family see the effect that he has on me, that I allow him to have on me. Ouch, ouch. Oh, I just got poked by those stickers. I don't know which one, one of those sticker plants, but really bad. Just a minute. I'll make sure there's nothing stuck in me. No. So, where's Lola? Lola! Oh, there she is. See? Because she has a hard time getting down those rocks over there. So she was, so she was telling me yesterday about him, having a conversation with me about him. And she said, she said that, listen, I could see everything that she was saying and why she was saying it. But there's a different perspective there that she just doesn't get. Look, the dogs are over there. There's a, there's a rock rabbit. You can hear it in, in those rocks there, yelling. And Rexy was checking it out. But I guess Rexy knows it, when those rock rabbits get in those, those rocks, there's no way he can get them. They, like, go way, way in. She, you know, she was saying things like... I know from my friend that, let's see if I can see it. Yeah, look, it's in there yelling. I'm going to turn it around so you can see it because it's cool. Let 
gonna be able to see it. If you can. Are you yelling? You're a good one, yeah. You're a good one. You're a good one, yeah. There, you can see it there. You the boy, you 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 yelling one. Uh, I'm gonna let that little rock rabbit be. It's probably freaked out. So. <laughs> I think this is a twin flame video slash rant slash nature nature hike. <laughs> <laughs> so she was telling me all sorts of things and I was listening to her because I could see her perspective and I also it's interesting to see how other people see it because I know that she's also uh, a little bit of my parents mouthpiece on this because I think my parents think similar that it's kind of like I'm under a spell or that I'm giving away all my energy. And, and, you know, it's true. The only thing is, the only thing that is, the only thing that I'm off with, and this is something also with my kids, is that they don't take into, they, they like, um, like blame. And they don't take into consideration that I'm my own entity and that I make the decisions. So if I'm in the situation then it's my responsibility for being in the situation. It's not, you know, it's not him doing something to me. It's rather me I'm trying to find a place to, a stable place to set this because I want to take off my sweater. Uh, I don't want to break eye contact with the video. And so it's like, it's, it, 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 you know, I am an active part in this, uh, you know, uh, 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 receiving or also not only receiving, I'm putting out also, you know, maybe I'm, I'm weaker in it or I'm allowing myself to be weak or I'm losing myself in it, which I think is part of the journey. That's part of what I need to overcome is the weakness, you know, not allow myself to be lost. Uh, hold on to my strength while I do this, you know, this uh, twin flame journey. You know, not lose myself, allow myself to continue to be. Look at this line I got here. That's only come in in the last few years. It's like a, is that like a worry line? I don't know. I guess it's there. So, tied my sweater. I'm getting closer. So down there in the valley, there's some ancient runes. See, everywhere you go in Israel, there's ancient runes. I love it. There used to be down here, a, I think, a, a, there, there were, I think there were seven different, like, rain gutters that bring the rain down into the valley. And then down in the valley, there was, like, a, a wheat a wheat factory or you know you'd call it a factory but it was like a wheat grinding facility there's some cool runes down in the valley all the way I'm not gonna go all the way down there because there's a lot of things that I want to do today I still haven't told my story about yesterday it's already 34 minutes so she was talking to me about that and she was saying that she doesn't think that he's good for me and and I don't, I, you know, I, I don't even want to go into the twin flame thing with them. I did with my mother a little bit. And she kind of, uh-huh, uh-huh. But I don't think that anybody, that, you know, I, I think that you have to be really open to it in order to understand that it's a real thing. You either have to be going through it or you have to be highly, highly spiritual, open spiritually in order to understand that there is such a thing and that it is real and that it is your enlightenment. And that's that's what it is. That's what it's all about. And I can see like also this video, like of me being strong again, 
coming into my strength and say, I want, oh, what I was saying about the depression is at the end of the depression, after I realized that nobody is there for me, nobody can do it for me. I'm the only one. Nobody can come in and save me from my own depression, from my own mind. And then I just decided, I made a decision that I am getting out of this because my good friend that I was going over to his house all the time, his sister was going through the same thing. And she was also, look at this, a cool old heater down here between the rocks. People used to come and just dump their junk here. And so his sister was going through a depression also during the same time. And I also would like to see if there's anybody watching that uh, is going through like the menopause years. If, if they feel like, uh, well, yeah. I knew that was going to happen because I was, wasn't steady. I was stepping on it. I slipped down in between these stones. Okay. <laughs> See, I'll show you what I'm doing. I'm like, I have a cup of coffee in one hand, the camera in the other, and I'm skipping stones. See? <sighs> and over there where I fell, I was actually stepping on a big leaf that was sitting on a stone, so it was like slippery. So, maybe I'll sit and talk for a few minutes just so I can get this, like, summed up and then I can decide where I'm going to hike. Anyway, it's fun randomly hiking and talking. You get places where you wouldn't think of going. It just kind of, ouch, kind of goes into place. So... So she was talking to me about that, and then I just kind of felt like being alone. I was also after that whole cry fest in the morning, and so I went home, and I just started doing things. And I, I, you know, when I'm in that mode, I feel like I have to run, I have to run, I have to run. But I wanted to do something that is also like... Um, not just running, something that, that allows me to move forward, something that is actually moving me in the right direction. And I figure I'm working on this, uh, you know, I'm working on so many different things all at the same time, but my head isn't, it wasn't uh, clear to do things. So, or to come up with, you know, when you're not, when you're in that mode, you're not inspired and you certainly don't want to be sitting down and trying to write out a workshop when you're coming out of fear and, and these low vibrational places, you want to be in a high vibrational place first. So I went home and I started doing laundry and I did the dishes and I cleaned the house, which was really nice because then I got to come home to a clean house. And then I just felt like going and I was, I thought, well, I'll either go to my daughter to visit my daughter. Because she opened up a, a pension for dogs, and she has 17 dogs already. She just opened it up like a week ago, and she has 17 dogs, uh, like babysitting. You know, she built she built this really nice in the Golan Heights. I'm so proud of her. She's so <laughs> go get them. Yeah, I used to be go get them like that. That's kind of the, that's what I woke up this morning feeling like. Go get them. You know, just get. You know, put this whole twin flame, oh, somebody else is going to have to make me home blah, 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 on the side and get your life in order. If you want to go to, if you want to go to India, go to India. Uh, you know, if you want to hold down a house and have a place for your children, make holidays and do all of that. It's not dependent on anybody else. Remove your dependency. You know, you become whole. And that's what this twin flame thing, journey is about. So I went home and I started doing that and I was still like, <gasps> you know, you get like where you have to run, you have to run, you have to run, you feel like running. And so I decided I was going to go to the Mediterranean. There's some stones that I get from there that I pick up and that I sell on Amazon. So I figured I love doing it, you know, and I don't do it often enough because sometimes when it comes in, it feels like work, like, oh, I'm going to take a whole day now and drive all the way out to the Mediterranean and pick up stones. But yesterday I felt like it was the right thing to do because I had, uh, on the way, I listened to a, a, a lecture on, the, uh, on my phone, on the, on the thing, a really good lecture about, about having love in your heart, which was really good uh, by, I think it was, I don't remember, I think I'm going to put it up, I think it was maybe Joe Dispanza, but maybe not, but I think so. And, um, and then... 
And then I got there and I realized I forgot my purse, my backpack. It's not a purse really, my backpack with it, had my money in it and everything. And I knew when I was leaving that I was gonna have to put gas in because I was already low on gas. So I get there and I have one stripe, you know, and I'm an hour and a half away from home and I have no wallet. I'm like, holy crap, what am I gonna do? And so then I, I tried to call my son because he lived there and he, he lives close by and he wasn't there. He was up north for the holiday. So he's an hour and a half away and I had nobody to call. So I, uh, uh, he told me, I told him, listen, the last time I tried to use my credit card, which is a few days ago, it didn't go through. So even if I go to, uh, uh, I had cash in my wallet. So even if I go to uh, the gas station and they allow me to put in the number, you know, if I can find the number even in my phone and they allow me to put it in, it, it might not go through. And he said, listen, um, if you need, then I can give you my credit card number. I thought maybe I could pay somebody with a bit, you know, transfer the money and then they give me cash. I was trying to figure out all sorts of creative ideas. So I started my way back and I just decided, okay, I was just going to move. And I wasn't too worried. You can see it by the video yesterday. I wasn't too worried about it, maybe a little bit, but not too worried. I know that I always, in the end, it works out somehow. And then, you know, worst case scenario, I just wait around for my son to come back home in the night when he does, and then he'd help me figure it out. So, and I was thinking, do I have friends out here? But I didn't, I didn't feel like there were any, anybody that I could really call that was close or people that I wanted to bother on the middle of the holiday, like, hey, come and help me. Um, so I went, ended up going to a gas station and they had like this application that you can, that you can pay uh, uh, through the application and just uh, tell them which, which gas station you're in and which pump. And so I tried it with my credit card. My credit card didn't get through, so I called my son and he helped me out with it. And that was, uh, and so that I ended up, and it was pretty, it was pretty easy going it just kind of, kind of just, uh, you know, I, I made it. And then I went to the hot springs and I was there for, you know, close. To, I was there like up until dark. I was there late yesterday and I was there for about a half an hour. There were quite a bit of people, but I just felt like I needed to, you know, the hot water and something about the, the, um, that water specifically is healing to me. I think it's healing for everybody. But, you know, it's water that comes out of the depths of the earth. You're in there hot. It, it like, it seeps into you, uh, into your soul. And it's just bubbling out of the earth. And so today I have plans. I'm going to go, I have, there's a few things happening today. So I want to get some work done so that this day can be productive in the way of me making my living. And I want to get, I want to get my work done, I have some work done. And then I'm going to go to the Jordan River. I have some friends that uh, are setting up camp there and they were there a couple weeks ago and they invited me and I didn't go because I was so miserable. <laughs> and because my kids were home and they, oh, and, and because I went, I went to sit with my twin and said, so put on the on the scale of what I would prefer to be doing but anyways I'm gonna go and visit them this afternoon and then the Rob Roy the, the jam at the Rob Roy is starting today so I think I'm gonna go I'm gonna go home now it's still morning I'm gonna do my I already meditated this morning I'm gonna go home I'm going to do I'm not gonna hike down there I've, I've already been out a lot a long time and the dogs got and I want to get some stuff done so I'm gonna get back home I'm going to do some stuff for my work and then I'm going to go to the Jordan River and I will probably, probably have more to say today because I can see how this day is going. I'm already, I'm inspired. What I was going to say about that, that uh, depression is that at the end of that depression, when I realized that it's just me and my friend whose sister was going through the same thing and and she, she was, and I knew she was going through the same thing because he was telling me she keeps on calling and crying and I don't know what to do and that it was weighing him down and he had me on him and he had her on him. And then this one morning it got to like this place. It was just, I was in this horrible place and he called me 
and told me that she had committed suicide. And she had a nine-year-old son. And seeing that, you know, nine-year-old son, it was the same age as I think my son at the time, my youngest, or right around the same age. Maybe he was a year older, I don't remember. Maybe he was one year older, I don't remember. But it was right around, you know, it's like it gave me the same feeling as if that could be my son. And first I was shocked because the day before that, my brother called me out of the blue. And he said that he wanted, you know, he said he heard that I was going through a hard time. I need to figure out how to get across this fence now. So he heard that I was having a hard time and he offered me to come and have coffee with him. And so I went and had coffee with him. And that was the first time that I had admitted to anybody that I was, that I had contemplated suicide. You know, I, it got so bad that the depression got so bad. I was in such a low place that it looked, you know, you know you, how your brain starts working as Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, you know. Your brain starts telling you stories like, because you're so miserable and you want out of the misery, it's the same thing with addiction. Because you want it so bad, your brain, your brain plays tricks on you. And because I was so miserable and I wanted relief from the misery, so I think I'm going to go through right here. I, uh, I started contemplating the suicide and and it was crazy that that same day, like that, the night of that day, because it was the next early morning that he called me because they found her. She had hung herself in her kitchen with her son home and her ex-husband was also there. So he found her, so her son didn't see her. But still, it like shocked me and I made a decision. Because I had, I had quit eating, and I kind of thought, well, I don't want to go up the main road. Do I? I want to go a different way. So, and I went to visit him while he, like, at her house. Uh, well, he, you know, because in here you sit Shiva. You sit seven days at, you know, when somebody close to you dies, somebody of family, first kin, you sit for seven days in mourning and people come and visit. And so I went and visited also, but I made a decision that I am going to live, that I made a decision I'm gonna make myself better because I had quit eating for like a couple months and I started getting like these, waking up with these massive, like uh, bruises that came from nowhere. I think it was just like my blood vessels started popping or something. I don't know. But I made a decision, a conscious decision that I'm choosing life. I am choosing, I'm, I am going to do anything that it takes to get out of this. And I started force feeding myself. And uh, then I went on medication, psychiatric medication, which I had, I had did not want to before that. I refused to because I, I think that everything in your brain can be taken care of by your brain. But I did. And I went on it for a year and then I went off of it. I didn't like it that much because, well, first of all, I want to say that it helped. So I'm not, I'm not, it helped. It stabilized me. It allowed me, I went out and found a job at the Rob Roy during that time, which really helped me because it helped me get like some kind of normalcy into my life. It helped me get back on track to work through things. And those, uh, those psychiatric pills that I took, they kind of normalized me. They kind of made me in a stable, kind of made me stable, kind of even. I didn't like them afterwards. After about a year, I went off of them because I felt like, not only do you not feel the lows, but you don't feel the highs. Everything just becomes kind of drabby. You just become kind of, mm, you don't get excited about anything, but you also don't get, you know, worked up about anything. So, 
it's funny because yesterday, most of the day, I didn't want to talk at all. I mean, I talked in the morning a little bit because I kind of felt like, okay, this needs to be part of it. You know, if I'm also for me, you know, if I'm putting up my story onto YouTube, and, you know, and then I just disappear for two days, okay, you know, let's say three months down the line, I'm not going to really know what, what happened in those two days because everything is so up and down and all around and happening so fast that, you know, who knows what I did in those days. But so yesterday I did record a couple of videos in the end. A little bit miserable. This is snake season. The snakes are starting to wake up and I'm walking through all this tall grass and I'm hearing things in the grass moving. So... And so I feel like there was a different story the line that I was on. Oh, so she committed suicide and then I decided that I'm coming out of it. And I decided that I'm going to do anything that it takes that my kids need me and that I want to get my life back. And that's kind of like I felt this morning, kind of like, you know, I have this stubbornness in me is that I am going to overcome this. I'm not going to be a weakling. I'm not going to be a victim to circumstances. I'm not going to be a victim to anybody else. I'm not waiting for nobody. I am not waiting. I want a spectacular life. I'm going to have a spectacular life, and I'm going to make it for me. You know, I'm the only one that can make it for me, just like with my depression, like that nobody could come in there and fix it for me. And besides, who wants somebody else with some dead weight dragging along behind him, you know, having to make me happy? I know how to make myself happy. Yeah, I do think that I would be happy with him. Like if we were, if not, not, not in this way. You know, if, if, if he is attracted to me and wanted me in the same way that I want him, I think that I could be happy with him. But if not, that doesn't mean I'm not going to have a happy life. I want to have a happy life and I'm not waiting for anybody. If I, you know, if, if someone comes along that makes me happy and that I see that I can, that we're compatible and that we, and that, and that we have a good life together and that we complement each other and that we can, you know, build each other up. Cause that's the kind of relationship. That's also something that I realized after my divorce, that there are relationships that break you down and there's relationships that bring you up. You can learn from either of them. Yeah. You can learn from being broken down, tough lessons. But you can also learn from being built up and through grace and, and, and understanding and love. Love is a big teacher. So today is a good day. Today is a good day. Today I've decided that I am nothing outside of me and decides my destiny for me it's me so if there's things that I want to do I need to just do them if there's you know projects that I want to do I need to just do them not just sit around and wait for oh everything has to be in order for me to do this no that's what happened for years and years and years you know one day one day i'll get a divorce and 20 years went by one day one day i'm gonna go out and i'm gonna do this or one day if this and this and this happen then i'm gonna go do this and this and this no if I want something to happen in my life, then I need to make it happen. And it's one step at a time. So I'm just gonna take the steps that I know how to take. Today I'm going out to the Jordan River to visit my friends. And then I'm gonna go to the Rob Roy. And before that even happens, I'm gonna go home and I'm going to make a living. I'm going to do work to the equivalent of at least this day. And if I need to make money, because money is part of the deal in this lifetime, you know, I can't just be all against money. 
have these bad feelings towards money. Yeah. Money is part of it. And if that's something that, you know, I'm not going to fix it on my own right now. I'm not going to change that. So I might as well work with it. I can work with it and I have the same understandings as I have. I don't need to change me. I can understand it and work with it. I'm going to stop this. So that was nice. That was a, a neighbor um, that lives here in the, in, the, in the settlement. And he stopped me to tell me, because he knows that my son uh, goes and works out in uh, Tiberias. He does uh, MMA. It's like a contact, whatever. And his son was also with him. And so he he also teaches and he said he might open up a course here and, and leave me, which would be awesome. He said he taught for in, in, in France for 15 years. They're a family, a really nice, he's really nice, really nice. It's a family that came here a few years ago. So I just wanted to update about that because I know that all of a sudden he came into the scene and then just out of curiosity, I know sometimes they just want to know something out of curiosity. So I'm just going to update that. I'm getting home pretty soon. I've been out for probably over an hour now. I'm going to go home and get some stuff done. i eat something. And then I have a very cool day planned. So this is a good day. I'm excited about this. So wish me, first of all, send me strength. Send me strength. If you're watching this, then you know what I'm talking about. There are, we are all connected. So send me your prayers and your strength and good wishes and good wills for my for me I can feel it when it comes so thank you and we will update more later